lot of people have been constantly asking me to make a video on how to set up a nature aquarium. Now, for all of you friends who have visited our galleries in the year, Bangalore, Calcutta, you may have seen this little book. This making of nature aquarium is actually a stepwise guide with photographs of how to set up a nature aquarium. So the next time you come to any of our offices or galleries, remember to ask for this. There's no charge, okay? And get one of your own copy. But then I'm going to try and follow this book and show you exactly how a nature aquarium is set up. So, what is so important about all this nature aquarium setup? And you get a glass tank, put some stuff inside, throw a plant inside. Why should it be so? You know. Why should someone take the effort to do something like this and put something together? Well, a nature aquarium is that piece of technology that helps you to kind of bring in a piece of nature into your system, to your home, to your living space, to your office space, in a clinic. Nature aquariums are amazing. Amazing. They're, they're small biotopes, they're small pieces of nature that you bring home. And remember, nature is not easy. Neither is it complicated. Okay? It's for you to understand, learn a bit, and follow a certain process. Okay, that is why you need to understand how it is done. And each and every ingredient is very, very important to making those plants grow beautifully. Alright? So let's start with making a nature aquarium. So, step one, the tank. The tanks are available dime version. Every nook and corner, aquarium shop, they are making aquariums for you or tanks for you. Okay. Now please understand that uh, we in ABA promote a sapphire crystal glass, which is the same as your tanker or your sort watch. Most of you have seen one, a Rado. They have sapphire crystal glass because the quality of glass is really, really good. And it is scratch resistant. Pressure resistant and really clear because the amount of lead in them, the lead content in them is very, very low. Right? So that's why this glass is so clear. You can see how clear this glass is. Now, the other important part of setup is that you have a very strong cabinet. Yeah? Very, very important is to have a strong cabinet. Now, why do you need to have a strong cabinet? Because you have water, there is a certain amount of weight and you don't want it to wobble. Yeah, it has to be very sturdy, strong. You can use a table at home, you can use, ideally use a cabinet that is independent, not in the wall, stuff like that. Independent. Because if anything happens, you are able to correct it. Under the tank you use a mat. We call it the garden mat. It's a high density foam and the mat keeps the tank, you know, kind of stable on top of the cabinet. Cabinet is made of wood, laminate, so there may be some kind of an up and down. That mat absorbs all of that, it levels out the bottom for the tank. Clear? Now, in the tank, in here we use a very specialized silicon which makes the tank earthquake proof. Okay? Now, we don't need that in India, but the rest of the world, or Japan itself, it's very, very important. Right? Okay? So that is the first part, setting up the tank. So again, you get a good quality tank, because everything about an aquarium is visual. Why would you want bad quality glass? If it's hazy or dirty, you know, it's not good, there's no fun of it. You're not enjoying the true beauty of it. 
if the glass is not crystal clear. A strong cabinet, a good quality mat, that's your initial setup. Right? So once you have the whole foundation set, you start with the most important part or ingredient in this setup, and that is the bacteria. You have Bacter 100, okay, which is basically 100 types of bacteria which are required for um, any ecosystem. Okay, we need bacteria in our system to digest food, good bacteria, nitrosomous bacteria, and these, this is 100 types. Now, what happens is when you add this bacteria. Some of them are dormant or sleeping, okay, in simple terms. Now you need to wake this bacteria up. So you use a product called Tomaline DC. It's basically a charge, an electric charge, that wakes up the bacteria that is sleeping. Clear so go, food for the bacteria. Now, you sleep for so many hours, you wake up, you're hungry, right? So that's clear so go. So now let's add each of these. Now, ideally, you also get this in the form of super four, which is one time use for a two feet tank. Super 4. All the three ingredients I told you that is the Bacter 100, Tomaline DC, and Clear Super are in this measured for one tank that is a two feet tank, yeah, 60 centimeters. One tank, use one packet. Now you may say, What if I add a little more? Say two packets, no harm. The more the bacteria, the better your system, right? So what we're going to do is, we're going to start adding this, yeah? So I'm adding about two spoons here. And that little more I spoke to you about. Like I said, charge for the bacteria. Now don't worry, it starts acting only after you add water. Yeah. This is active only after you add the water. Again, about two spoons and that little extra. Finally, clear super. I'm adding this everywhere again in the time because I intend to grow plants all over. Now, if you're using, <coughs> say, in your aquascape, if you plant or have sand or something in front, you may want to, may not want to add, no problem. Yeah. So basically, I've added the bacteria on the glass. Remember this, I've added the bacteria on the glass. It's all there. You don't have to worry about mixing it and all of that. Nothing to do there. Add the bacteria. That's the first step in setting up your aquarium. Make sure you have the bacteria with you. Clear soup, super terminal BC and bacteria 100 called super 4. Why 4? With 3 ingredients. Right? The fourth most superb ingredient is you, the person who's making this nature aquarium. So from the start, you need 4. You're the one, you're the person making it. So that's why super 4. Alright? So, this is the step 1. Okay? 
So now the step two is to add power stack. Right? So what is power stack? Power stack is basically a fine, small granulated substance. Okay. Um, it's an ingredient which is very porous. It's a product which is it's a natural product which is very very porous. So it allows the colonization of bacteria. So we're putting it next, right? We're putting it down the bacteria. So it has multiple things. One, it allows the bacteria to colonize or make homes, stay inside because it's very porous, not a hole. Two, it adds height to the tank in case because this is a tall tank. You want to grow your plants tall, so it gives you a little bit of height in the back, you soil it. Okay. Two, it allows water circulation, so that means oxygen circulation, which keeps the soil or does not let the soil get out of it. Yeah. So that's the next ingredient, power sand. So power sand is what we are going to add next, correct? Power sand comes in three sizes, small, medium, large. Now, small would be used for a tank like this, which is only one feet tall. Because the height is less, we use small. Medium would be used for maybe a one and a half, or say a one and a half feet tank. Large can be used for a two feet tank. That's why I am using medium, right? Simple. Let's cut this open, cut it in the corner. And pour to the back of the bag. Again, why do I need it to the back of the tank? Is because I want more height. Yeah, I intend to keep this low. Use some kind of a carpet plant. I'll show you in the next step. So I'm actually making the back taller. So that was the second step. We added the bacteria, we added the power sand, now we are going to add the soil. Right? Here we are using the Amazonia 2. It's a star product of ADA, one of the best soils in the world. The only soil that gives you the result you need. Yeah. You can grow any kind of plant in it. Again, very simply cut the side. And now you pour from the front.
and then you level the sand towards the back. towards the back. Yeah? So see, one, you keep this front equal. And level this to the back. Now, the reason you want to level this to the back is you want a nice view. Because you're going to sit in front of the tank, right? So you want a nice view. So when it's leveled like this, see? When it's level like this, when you put something here, it gives you a kind of a, a view of it instead of it being flat and at the back, not visible, comes up into you. So you have a better, beautiful view. Now the next step is what we call the hard scale. So today we are going to use wood. Selecting the right pieces of stone or wood that you will use for the hardscape is like extremely important. Now, there is no good piece or bad piece. Okay, Every piece is a good piece. It's, it's a, of course, it comes from nature. It's how you use your imagination to put them together to make the aquascape look more natural and look like something that you would have seen in nature. So, observe the piece of wood, look at it carefully, every piece of stone and wood is very beautiful. Again, it comes from nature, so it is very, very interesting. It's your observation that makes the aquascape more interesting, more intriguing, more beautiful and visually attractive. So, observation is a very important part of an aquascape. So, hardscape means stone or wood. I am going to use uh, wood in this tank. Okay. I I have a certain thing going on in my head which I am trying to recreate. So, now this is the next part, 
like I said, the hard state. You just you decide on the way you want the wood to be placed. I've used a few stones here to kind of complement that piece of wood. Now, this for me is an imagination of um, a scene that I saw in um, Andaman, actually in Havelock Island. And uh, this was a large piece of wood that was kind of uh, placed like this and it was on the shore. Now I have added a little bit of more imagination, I am adding a little stone and I will be adding a few plants at the back. Um, during the video I will try and add that picture of that piece of wood that I have seen in Andama for you to understand and make comparison. Okay? Now this is my imagination. Um, use your imagination, but at this point you should know how you or what plant you are going to use. So I want to use a, a red plant at the back, maybe a Rotala HRA. I want to use some crypto balls here in front, nice and bushy because it's next to the wood. I probably use some Pinatifida on the wood. Okay. Um, it would be nice to have moss on the wood as well, okay, but that is another thing I'll show you later. But I actually want that wood look, so I'm not using moss here. Okay. But ideally, you will add moss in these places where it's directly below the light. So, for example, this is a place you'll add moss, this is a place you'll add moss, you'll probably add moss here, here, here. These places where it's directly under the light is where you will add the moss. Okay. So, kind of a quick recap. We added the bacteria, we added the power sand, we added the soil. Now I'm going to add a little bit more soil to kind of adjust the spaces that I need. A little bit more soil actually. Where I think like at the back there, I will be adding a little bit more soil. And I'll show you, you will see that. Okay, and a few places where I inside that gap, I will add a little bit more soil. Yeah. And uh, let's see. So we'll take you to the next step now. Okay, kind of finishing of the hardscape, yeah. and then we'll do the planting. Okay, super. Okay. So we are using the same Amazon Air 2, this is a 3 litre bag, what we used before was a 9 litre bag, okay, so smaller size, which you can, of course if you are using smaller tanks or um, you need a little bit more than one bag is when you use the smaller size, okay. The smaller size is only the bag, not the granules, we have another product called the powder soil, which I will show you soon. So I am only filling up the spaces that I feel needs a little bit more soil. You can use a brush to kind of adjust the soil. I don't want the soil coming out, so I'm using a piece of wood, a stone actually, to block this here. Because I don't want it to come down and, you know, come to the front. So that's more or less complete. We are kind of set with the hardscape. So this is the final hardscape. This is how it looks. Okay. Let me kind of give you a closer look.
So finally, we are going to use aqua soil powder. Okay, powder. Now, powder is basically smaller size granules. Now, why we want to use it is now these granules are slightly larger. We want the powder soil to actually go in between these two these granules and be able to give us a place where we can plant comfortably. Now, powder soil can be used independently for carpets and stuff like that. Powder soil is also very good if you're using shrimp. Yeah, it's a fabulous product. Now, let's use a little bit of powder soil and then. I'm using a funnel like apparatus so that I can actually spread the powder soil easily. sand, you added the soil, you added the powder sand, you got your whole hardscape ready. Now the first step of planting is that the soil should be wet. It should be wet enough so that when you plant, you the plant goes in, the root goes in and you are able to plant. So we use basically a spray kind of a, a apparatus, you can use a small hand spray gun. That takes a long time and you spray. Okay? You spray enough. Now, why am I spraying? The reason I'm spraying is because I don't want to pour water and disturb the soil and all this hardscape that we've created. So spraying in a way is very easy. It does not disturb anything. Also, yeah, the water spreads evenly. Now if you see the water is going to the bottom. And eventually it will get very nice and wet. See, there you go. Okay. So once you've sprayed the water and the soil is amply wet, you start planting uh, the plants that you need easily. Okay, so what we've done here is we have planted the alumbias, we have tied alumbias onto a stone. Now that we will show you separately how to tie an alumbia. We've also tried pinati feeder onto a stone, we'll show you how that is done as well. And we've used a bit of cryptocon you will and planted in the specific area. Now let me show you. Now, very important thing about planting is that you prepare your plants well in advance. Okay, make sure it's all segregated, it's removed from the DC cup. We'll show you how that is done. Okay, those will be independent videos for each of those. And once you have it ready, okay, you plant. Now, planting is very important that you use the right kind of tools. Okay, I'm using an ADA pin set. This is a large size because it fits my hand. It's ergonomically designed because that's when it sits properly in your hand. Yeah? And you take, now I'm using plants that I was actually already growing in my tank here. So it's simple. This is the top part, this is the bottom part, or where you want the root. Okay, take a couple of these, hold it in the pinset clearly. Okay, and you plant. Now remember, start from shorter to taller. Why would we want to do that? Yeah, Because if you plant the taller ones first, it will fall and droop and you will not know where to plant the shorter ones. Okay. 
So ideally you finish your government plans first, then you go to the stem plans. Okay. That's the actual way to do it. But here because we are using small size plants, we are going ahead and planting them. Okay. Now this be patient, don't be in a hurry. Okay, there's no hurry to do this. Be patient. Always keep a, a spray at hand so that you keep spraying the plants so that they don't dry out. Okay. In an ideal situation, if you're doing this at home and you're, it's not an air conditioned room, don't use the fan. Fans tend to dry out the plants very quickly. Okay. So I'm going to come closer and show you this. See, tweezer, hold the plants correctly, yeah, and plant. Plant adequately enough so that you know you don't have too much of uh, gaps here. Plant well. Okay close to each other, maybe in one centimeter square plant about four stems. You can plant two, three stems together if you are planting stem plants, there is no problem. Uh, plants like uh, hair grass, you can actually plant small bunches together, maybe about eight, ten plants there. Yeah, that, that's pretty good. So now filling water our way is basically we have a bucket full of water which is ambient temperature, not uh, there is no chlorine in the water so it is dechlorinated water okay. and we use uh, your hand and pour extremely slowly all through your hand. Yeah. I am trying to do this filter because so that you can see so when you do this, the water, the pressure, it falls on your hand and dissipates and you are able to keep the soil undisturbed. Yeah? So we are now filling the water, we show you once it is done. So this is what the planted tank or the nature aquarium looks like uh, once we've uh, planted it. So we've got Pinatifida on the wood. Of course we've not tied any moss like we had discussed earlier because I wanted the look of the wood to come up and the brown color you know, looks very good. So we've got Anubias and uh, we've got a few Cryptocon okay, in, in the whole wood. and. Uh, um, as you see, we'll see other pictures with the other plants. 
this is uh, Anisia pedicillata and uh, Prosperinca palustris on the other side. This is the photosynthesis happening or the growth. See the different kinds of plants. Um, children are always impressed with nature aquariums. <coughs>